This is On the Other Hand. podcast sponsored by Brave Angels in Arkansas that explores politics and other issues of importance to Arkansans through conversations with community leaders. Stay with us as we talk to another leader in Arkansas who works across differences to get things done and to bring us closer together. Hello and welcome to On the Other Hand. I'm your host Glenn White. I'm here with my co-host April Chatham Carpenter and on our podcast, as you know, April and I interview community leaders in Arkansas who help work towards solutions across various political or other divides or who in some way uh, reach across the divisions in our community. So we got a pretty cool guest today. April, tell us who it is. Glenn, I'm so excited today. I'm really honored to be we're speaking with a long-term local journalist and author and opinion leader, John Brummett. You know, most, most of the people that are listening who might be from Arkansas will recognize John as a regular contributor. He uh, has worked for the uh, newspaper world for many years, um, but uh, working for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette in his current capacity. And he does opinion and analysis columns. Some of the older listeners, no doubt, though, have has also had the opportunity and pleasure of hearing him in person. Has ongoing series of talks on local and state politics for LifeQuest, which is a lifelong education organization locally, and lots of other things that John has been into. But we're going to wait for John to fill us in on some of these particulars. So welcome, John, to On the Other Hand. Well, it's great to be with you. Great to know about... Uh braver angels and that they had an interest in what I might have to say. It's great to be here. Thanks. Well, absolutely. I know before we got on the air, uh, we were having a little bit of talk about kind of what you're, you've done in the past, but I'd, I'd love for you to tell us a bit about yourself and how you got to this point in your career, kind of what takes up your time these days as well. Oh, goodness. What takes up my time these days, uh, pickleball, writing columns, two beagles, uh, and that fills it up pretty much. Uh, uh, that, that takes most of the time. Uh, I, I'll cut through it quickly. Uh, I was a weird kid uh, growing up in southwest Little Rock uh, to a conservative family that didn't take the Gazette, but they t- did take the Afternoon Arkansas Democrat. And I was, uh, as a kid, I waited all day for the newspaper to arrive, to be thrown, the sound of it, the thump in the driveway when it was thrown, and I studied the sports pages and thought those bio- people with bylines were the cutest, were the coolest people in the world. And uh, that age 16, when I was sports editor of my local paper at McClellan High School, now destroyed, uh, I uh, had the audacity to write a letter to the Democrat sports editor wanting a job, and he gave me one. And I, uh, three days after my 16th birthday, I became a part-time sports writer covering local sports and going in before school from 6 until 8, helping them produce the afternoon sports page. Uh, and I've drawn since December 9th, 1969, I've drawn a paycheck from various Arkansas newspapers and media sources ever since, 50, 53, 54 years. I got a 52-year pin uh, uh, last year, but... Uh, so it's 53 at least now. Uh, very lucky guy to, be, uh, to, to find something at an early age I knew I wanted to do, to continue to want to do it, for it to be made more interesting for me over the years because in 1986 I was at the Gazette covering the state capitol in politics and the newspaper war was on and the Gazette decided they needed a local uh, political columnist, somebody who could report and have some attitude and answer John Robert Starr, and they picked me and... Uh, my life has been blessed ever since. So, so that's that, that's how I got to where I am. For those who don't know, so John Robert Starr was a long time very conservative. He columnist. was conservative. So co- were, he was managing editor of the Democrat, uh, and uh, also uh, assigned himself a column on the Voices page. Wrote it seven days a week, and had connected with readers in a in a in a, in a, in a chatty and effective way. So, and, so you uh, were the liberal counterpart to him. Well, what they you told. know, I never called myself that, but uh, yes, yes, that's a, a shorthand version for these purposes. Yes, that's what we'll say. Yeah. So, what was the, your reaction of your your parents when you moved over from uh, reading the Democrat to to uh, becoming a columnist for the Gazette? Well, they're uh, 
uh, their country folks uh, were, uh, both have passed, uh, from, south, from tenant farms in southwest Arkansas, children of the Depression, and I think they were, they were prouder than, than they could express that uh, their boy was writing for the paper. And uh, it didn't matter that it was the Gazette. Uh, it, uh, uh, what mattered is that uh, I was doing what I wanted to do, and they were, uh, they were proud of me. I will tell you one quick story. Uh, I'll, I'll make it quick, because this is a rare experience for me, and it might sort of segue to our discussion of uh, civility or understanding each other in politics. I was raised in the Church of Christ, a very fundamentalist, evangelical uh, 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 group, and a very fervent uh, family. Uh, my, my father had become an elder. and uh, uh, so Anyway, long story short, along the way, I, uh, I backslid badly, completely out the back door. Is how far, I, I did not attend anymore, and I hadn't for several years. And one, time, and one Sunday morning in my parents' church out in southwest Little Rock, the preacher said the following, why just this morning in the Arkansas Gazette, a writer named John Brummett, no relation of course to our fine family of Brummets here, wrote so-and-so. And I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking that, that that doesn't happen to everybody, that you get attacked in your parents' church. Uh, and to their credit, they rushed right over after church to my house and said, uh, and reported on it, and they were just scandalized. That uh, uh, they knew I wasn't. They may not agree with me, but they knew I wasn't as bad as I had been led to believe in the pulpit of their church. And it affected my father's uh, uh, religious fervor from that point on. But anyway, I just thought that would sort of bring all my my background and then my new life together. A fellow told me the other day when I told him the story. He said. The journey of human life is indeed a strange journey, isn't it? And often it is, and it has been for me uh, in that respect. I hope it, well, I hope it, I hope it, uh, I didn't take too much time, but it, it, I think it en encompasses a lot of what I'm trying to relate about who I am and how I got to where I am. Yeah. It's a great story. It, it actually reminds me, uh, we had a, a guest on that, that uh, had come in to UA Little Rock as a, as a speaker, uh, Monica Guzman, also a, a, a journalist, and um, her parents were completely on the opposite side of the political spectrum, still are, uh, than she is, and, and, uh, but, but you know how we maintain our relationships and believe in each other, because we know that we're so much more than our politics. Uh, and we know that we have ethics because you get to know the people, regardless of where they, you know, what, what it, they're, how they're portrayed. I don't believe we are as disconnected, hostile, and dysfunctional as human beings as we are political believers. I, I, and I think that must be part of what you all believe. Right. And some way to, in some way to, to, to blend human connection in a way uh, with politics in a way that can overcome some of this natural instinctive uh, disdain. I think, you, I think you just encapsulated the whole idea behind Braver Angels, right? April? Well, that's, uh, I hope so. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. So, so you, you all, uh, good luck in getting us there, you know? <laughs> uh, I, I do want to kind of bring up the elephant in the room a little bit, though, uh, just to, early on in the interview, because people who have read your, your column um, see you, potentially they might see you as someone that strongly advocates for one side, and um, some have even described you as snarky. I, I have not found that, and just getting to know you for these few minutes that we've had so far, but um, I'd love for you to explain to those skeptical folks out there how you fit the bill as a community leader who reaches across divisions and the work that you do, since that is what we try to have, yeah. or people um, that we have, try to have on our podcast. Well, I'm going to tell you, I, I can't, uh, uh, I can't at this moment uh, uh, disabuse anyone, any reader, of uh, 40 years worth of notions based on what I've written. If they find me snarky. If they find me liberal, if they don't believe I have any business uh, uh, holding forth on civility or bridging gaps in politics, then they're entitled to that view. And I've written four columns a week for 38 years. That comes to thousands. And I have been snarky. I have been a liberal advocate. I have, been, I have lacked civility. 
There are times in my writing when I feel so strongly about the issue and have such disregard, such such animus toward uh, different views that I I get tough. I do, uh, and and my idea of uh, of common ground is less. Let's all get together and more. Those of us who are inclined to try to find solutions, who despair of the of the instinctive anger that permeates everything, who, who sort of are either center left or center right or have a pragmatic or a moderating uh, 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 notion of politics, we need to become more of a political force. Uh, I'm against the extremes. I don't, I'm not advocating civility with extremes. I want to marginalize them by coalescing into a greater political force from the center. But I'm not going to tell anybody, uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to tell any reader that I am anything other than what they think they've beheld for 40 years. I've written it. They can respond. They, they can feel about it as they want. I do know that just as I was snarky, I was just rereading my column of Tuesday. I actually say in the, no, of last Thursday, I say in the second graph, what I just said is not true. I was being sarcastic. I believe sarcastic and snarky may be largely the same thing. I mean, I'll do it. I'll use it sometimes. And it's usually when I'm feeling particularly vehement about something. Well, I won't get into issues. We don't need to do that. Uh, but other times I write, I've got a whole history, recent history, of writing with Greater disdain, disdain for one extreme, but growing, uh, uh, growing disdain for the other extreme and advocating pragmatic solutions so that we don't, for example, wind up nearly shutting down our government every time we reach a debt ceiling. Uh, that's, uh, and, and I have, you may have noticed, and I, I know you don't want to talk specific politicians, but as a model, a lot of liberals have grown weary of me being so agreeable and 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 uh, flatter and, and, and giving so much flattery to the very pragmatic i thought successful center right government under asa hutchinson I, I i know you don't you want me to talk about principles and how we come together but but the same while some people are saying uh, He's just a liberal. How can he talk about uh, 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 about civility? I've been real civil toward a Republican governor because we have found that in the great center-right, center-left area among well-meaning people, you can solve a lot of problems and you can agree on a lot of uh, on, on a lot of on a lot of things. So that's the best I can answer that. Yes, yeah, some days I'm uh, I'm just a liberal advocate. I'm and and some days I'm snarky. And other days, I'm not. Well, thank you for that that thought, John. One of the things that I was thinking about when we talked about who we're going to have on as guests, we certainly went to the low-hanging fruit, the ones who are obviously, and we don't have Mother Teresa here, but, you know, people who are <laughs> really good at reaching across and just great examples. But it became quickly apparent to me that we are all imperfect. Right. And there are plenty of people out there who are imperfect and have their bad moments, I being one of them and yet do some things. They follow good moral principles. They try to bring people together. And so that's, I think, what we're trying to do with, on the other hand, is to uh, identify and talk about and feature the people uh, when they're doing something like that. So it's, in answer to your concerns, we're not expecting you to be perfect because none of us are. That's well, okay. Well, I'm, I'm very close. I'll take your word for joking. it. There, there's that snarkiness again. Yeah, I got a little smugness. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, well, but, well, let, but my uh, just to introduce, to further set this stage. I admire your initiative. I wish you all the success in the world. In any way I can agree or assist in a dialogue, wonderful. But I'm. It may be that your group is more about general good principles and civility restored to our politics, whereas I'm trying, I'm, 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 I'm a veteran political watcher, and I'm looking for a politics that works better, and I think it works better if the center from both parties 
is more of a force. I think the, it has to coalesce in, a, in, a, in an effective way and further marginalize the extremes. And, I'm, and if, if, if 12 Republican senators can get together and come up with an infrastructure bill that they pass, I think that's good. And I like, I like the muscle. I like a little political muscle coming from those who are willing to work together. Yeah. I'm not trying to work with everybody as a principal because some I think I can't. Yeah. So it may be different from you all, but so what? So what? I mean, uh, we're all in here trying to find something that works and is better than what we got now, because what we got now is 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 a grievous threat to the country, I believe. Yeah, we're we're not uh, trying to reject anyone who's willing to abide by our general principles. Uh, but I will tell you, I mean, my personal view, and, and April, you may have a different view, and that's fine. But my sense is is exactly what you were saying that the extremes on either side, both sides are often very hard to reach. If they're willing to give us a listen and try, that's great. But in reality, we usually don't get the extremists. They put us down as somehow giving in to the enemy. Right. That's on both sides. So, right. so exactly. I that's exactly easy. agree with you uh, that Braver Angels, even though they don't say it overtly, I think that's what we wind up doing is appealing to the broad two-thirds or three-fourths of the middle of the political spectrum and try to get them to better model that civil behavior and uh, adhere to those values that we kind of agree upon are, are good for ourselves and our fellow Americans and for our country. Uh, I get that, and it's difficult, and uh, and political uh, regulars will uh, scoff at it. That's a, you know, you just uh, you, you can't do that. The, you, the, that's that's Pollyanna. Uh, the, the, the parties are dominated by the extremes. Those are the people who give the money. Those are the people who do the work. And moderation is naturally a passive thing. And it's nice to talk about succeeding in the middle. But when it comes right down to it, the politicians are going to be politicians and they're going to play to their bases. And 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 you're not going to accomplish anything. I don't believe that is necessarily so. I believe we're better. I be. I believe we're more agreeable in this great uh, plurality of the center uh, as humans than than in our political beliefs, uh, than the, than in the two political beliefs. And I think, with a lot of hard work and effort, it can get better. But yeah. I think it comes from those people. But I also, as a pragmatic watcher of politics, it comes from that those people galvanizing. For political power, so yeah, yeah. that's that's uh, sort of the way I read that. Unfortunately, it seems like uh, the vast middle uh, they may be moderate, but they all often are not uh, energized to take a, a big role in politics. Unlike the extremes, unless something really serious happens, and so I I think our our uh, mission would be to galvanize those in the middle. Uh, in a more long-term way, if possible. And yes, I know that sounds naive, and it may very well be. But you know, you got to have principles and stand for something, and that's yes. kind of what we stand for. Yeah. So let me let me right. ask you this. Sure. Um, I, I think it's pretty obvious where you stand. We we kind of in Brave Angels we talk about red and blue, maybe purple, where you stand. Um, I even have one of our more creative uh, past leaders said she was periwinkle. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> you know, where would you put yourself? I mean, are you just extreme blue or some shade of blue or purple or what? I'm not going to lie. I'm going to be blue, okay. but I'm going to be a lighter blue than a lot of the blue that I'm encountering. And there's going to be a little, there's going to be a little lil lilac uh, highlight in my blue. I lilac. mean, a little a purple, purplish. Okay. And that uh, uh, it's going to be... The, Here's what I put on social media. On uh, it's not called Twitter anymore. It's called X, right? Okay. Uh, f uh, to identify myself, formerly liberal, never conservative. That's that's the way I describe it because okay. I'm ne I never have been conservative. Even even with all the opportunities I had as a child, I always resisted it. And there was a time, and this is kind of a cliche: when you're young, you're more liberal and then you are later when i was my early columns it was pretty reliably liberal i've become much less reliably liberal over the years and uh 
more willing to say some of you on the left are as it's an it's an illiberalism. It's an intolerant illiberalism, and I don't I don't practice it, and 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 uh, I blame you sometimes almost as much as the other side. So yeah, don't, I'm not going kidding. Who's kidding? We're not kidding anybody. I'm I'm bluish. I'm blue. I'm baby blue. Okay, powder blue. All right, good enough. Okay. So let me ask you this then. Given that you're shade of blue, uh, what got you there? And, and one might think, well, you were raised in this very conservative household. So how did you wind up being blue? Uh, that's that's a question many have asked, and I ask it, and I don't know. All I know is what was all I can, all I know is what was going on in my brain, and I don't know how things started going on and going in my brain like that. But I remember. Just to be real candid, I remember sitting in a church with great people as a child and, uh, and, and, and listening to fine people give sermons and listening to energetic a cappella singing and respecting my parents for what, the way they were raising me, but knowing as soon as I can, I'm out of here. This is not me. I don't buy all of this. Mm-hmm. I don't know how. how. Now, then when I'm like early 20s and I'm hired at the Arkansas Gazette, it is true. Most of your people in the newspaper industry, certainly in those days, were of a liberal persuasion. I don't think, I'm not going to kid that in. And I fell under those influences, which made it all the stronger. But I had an instinct early, uh, both in politics, religion, and general culture, to be more liberal. I remember as a kid... Uh, just making my mother livid by trying to explain to her that she was just ridiculous on in her opposition to all this these scare tactics about the Equal Rights Amendment. And I'm like 11 or 12, and and where did I get that? I I don't know. You, I don't know. You know, there's some uh, research uh, in our field that looks at the things that are associated with political views, and there's a some pretty strong argument that at least part of one's political leanings are based upon the personality that you're born with. Uh, so that could be one thing, but you know, and, and I'll share this about myself and then I'll uh, turn it back over to April. But, you know, I also was raised in a very conservative uh, religious uh, church and family. And um, I, I became liberal. And when I look back at it, I think you know, the thing that I heard growing up was the teachings of Jesus and everything that I heard in um, church to me seemed very consistent with the more liberal philosophy. And I know people are probably blowing their stacks over that one, but they, they, that, they that was kind of the, the way I looked at it. And I don't know if that's true or not. I know the personality probably plays a role as well. There's also the, uh, there's a common ground and I know we'll, we'll, another question coming, but there's a common ground in populism, that that uh, advocacy for working people and and for the downtrodden, there's a there's there's that was an old FDR liberalism kind of thing. Now it's been appropriated by the right wing largely, but my parents were not dogmatic in any way. They responded to things as they came up, and but they but they thought they were conservative. My dad was a warehouseman loading trucks, loading Nabisco trucks. As such, he was a he was a, uh, a teamster, and he would bring home the teamster uh, uh, information and the Arkansas AFL CIO bulletin, and he would complain about the dues he had to pay, and if they went on strike, he was going to go broke and he couldn't feed his kids. I'm reading this material and getting maybe indoctrinated, you know. So that's that's that's. And it was all founded in being a, a working class family without a strict ideology. We were, nobody told me what I was supposed to be, and nobody told them what they were supposed to be. They just, and I'm, I, told some, I told my wife last night, talking about coming here, she said, what was your daddy's politics? I said, he had two favorites when I was a kid, Faubus and Eisenhower, both because of what they did in 1957. Makes no sense. But one stood up for uh, the people of the state, and the other said, you're not going to get away with that. I'm going to send the troops in here and straighten you out. And he just was very comfortable saying, I like them both. You know? So that's sort of what was going on. And from that, 
and maybe my personality uh, and some of my exposure, uh, I became different. Next question. I, I love hearing the personal stories of, of both of you all, actually, and thinking about how you've changed over time or maybe continued down uh, the path that, that you're on and makes, it makes me think about my own path and hopefully the listeners about their own paths as well. Uh, we aren't, uh, many of us don't stay the same, um, but we, we bring in the, the things that, that we've come across or the people that have been in our lives. And one of the things that I know in your, your positions that you've had, John, is you've, you've interacted with, with people who differ from you politically, certainly, and, and you know, people who differ from you in other ways over the years. And I'm, I'm curious about how you manage interactions with people who see things differently than you. Well, the first thing I do is, uh, is try to de-emphasize politics. Uh, over the years, people who've, who have seen me in the public eye and seen me express political opinions, who, dif who differ with those opinions, when they meet me, say I join a new tennis league and uh, there are four or five uh, good Repu conservative Republicans in there and they're thinking, who let him in here to be in our tennis league? And any little quip or any reference to politics where they think they can bait me, I just don't get baited. I'm here to play tennis. I'm here to I'm here I'm here to 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 uh, see if I can beat you when it's my week to be against you, and uh, when it's, we're partners, if we can win this match. And I try to steer everything away from uh, politics. And I don't I don't mean to say I'm a likable person. That's for others to judge. But I'm telling you, over the years, I have had many people say, "Man, I hadn't." I had an entirely different view of you from reading you. I thought you would be this way, but you're normal. You're, you're, you know, you, you sit around and drink beer after and, 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 and somebody says something and I think, oh, Lord, Brahma's going to rise up on that. No, just let it slide. We're having beers. We just play tennis. That's what we're doing. And from it, I think some occasional dis some occasional agreements, some common ground can arise. I think that's sort of a parable of what y'all are trying to do. You know, every one of these people are good guys. So they say things that would get them canceled in some in some cultures. Uh, I don't do that. I just say, hey, okay. Uh, now some things could be so offensive that that would be different, but I'm not talking about that. Uh, just be, I mean, the human bond, the human connection is strong. I have a book, it's, it's a Monica Potts, the New York Times writer who moved to, uh, back to Clinton uh, from a very liberal New York Times life, moved to her hometown to write this book. And she did a guest piece for the New York Times saying, you all don't understand what's going on out here. You you people, who, elitist perhaps, let's let's. That's, that's probably a word I shouldn't use. Uh, but you don't get it. Uh, these people around here, they're going to vote for Trump because they're sick of all the spending. They're sick of their lives not getting any better. They, they want somebody who'll talk back to those they, 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 uh, who they blame. Trump talks back. They know he may be phony, but they like that he talks back. I know I brought up a name I shouldn't have brought up, but anyway, but for the, for these purposes. Uh, but if you're driving through Clinton, Arkansas, and your car breaks down, the first five vehicles that'll stop to help you will have Trump stickers on them, and they'll be wearing MAGA hats. They're good people. They are good people. Believe her, she says. They are. They might even vote for the library tax if you make a good case, you know. There is hope in all of that. But it's so difficult, for, even for me, not as extreme as others, to, to, to understand why some people have political views. That I don't understand why somebody is way ahead in his primary right now. I'll just say that. I don't get it. But he is. But it is not necessarily a reflection of, of uh, evil in those who, who, who have, hold that view. 
They're human beings who have many good qualities, and you got to work with them. You've got to talk with them. You got to get to know. Play some doubles tennis with them. Play some bridge. Play some poker. Do something, and 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 interact, and get to know people. How did the how did the gay rights movement go from Democrat liberal Democrats talking about civil unions to within two years we've got gay marriage. People learned about gay people. They became acquainted with people. It became more commonly observed, and people's views changed. I think that's the ultimate assignment of all of us, certainly of a group with Braver Angels' uh, objective, is, 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 to, is to somehow get people to get away from the instinctive political aversion and connect and, and see how much they can connect as, as human beings. Sounds preachy, but I think that's, uh, that may be what y'all are all about. It is absolutely what we're all about. And John, I, I, I basically gave this same, um, that same pitch this week to my uh, UA Little Rock uh, classes. Um, I'm teaching a class on listening and civil dialogue. And, and I'm like, that's if we can see each other as human beings, not as the labels. Yeah. Did you say listening and in human dialogue? Is that what you listening said? Listening and civil dialogue. Well, those, those are the two things you got to have. You know, uh, uh, people don't listen. I mean, they, they just, they, they, they define you by what they think they know, and it fuels their resentments. And then cynical political operatives have fed that in the interests of the two parties. By the way, I happen to think our two parties ill service anymore. I just do. Uh, I don't want to do about it, but I just, I think a lot of this is fueled by the fact that, that political operatives will look for what they can exploit. And if it's resentment and fear, they'll stoke it and exploit it and makes all this worse. So uh, that, uh, and, and, and partisan Democrats who've liked my column for years, sometimes they just uh, get as intolerant with me as the other side. So I think I'm saying the same thing over and over again in different ways. I think we all are, but it needs to be said. Yep. You know? and, and I think... Uh what you're talking about, about, you know, when you get to know people, when you form a relationship, when you interact, you know, and not just spend time on politics, then you become aware of the entire person. And they turned out mostly not to be such bad people. Right. But if all you know is who they voted for or what party they identify with and you don't go any further than that, then you fall into all the stereotypes. And that's the kind of thing that happens because of the way we are as human beings. I mean, there's a lot of research on that. The whole thing of tribalism is based on the notion that our brain is designed to pick sides because back in the prehistoric times, if you did not join a tribe, you would not last long in that dangerous wilderness. And so if you got in that tribe and you started making people mad because you had a different idea, they'd kick you out. So, so we evolved a brain to identify with sides. Of course, we also have a brain that uh, is capable of aggression, and we've learned to try to tamp that down and control it with the kind of the higher parts of our brain. And I think that's what we're trying to do in Braver Angels. And in a way, that's kind of what a lot of human endeavors, whether it be religion or you know whatever, tries to do. So well, I had a I had a smart fellow friend of mine say to me not too long ago, Brummett, you just don't have a need to belong in any group, do you? And I don't. Uh, I mean, as soon as I, as a kid, I'm thinking. I'm not going to be a part of this church when I grow up. Uh, you know, people think I'm a Democrat. Not, uh, not, I don't carry any card on that and don't want to. Uh, and in the newspaper business, what, what was a blessing to me is, uh, here, here's your space in the paper. This is what you do. I don't have to work with anybody. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I'm a columnist is, 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 it's it's is himself doing, uh, and and he's making his own way and establishing, if he can, his own readership. Whereas these investigative reporting teams, where people work together, committee meetings. I hate committee meetings. I just get me away from committee meetings, and I'm happy. So part of the reason I'm the way I am is is this aversion. I didn't get that tribal instinct apparently because I never really wanted to be in it. You're rolling your eyes. You think I got it because uh, you know <laughs> I, I think more you probably it. have it more than you think, but I think the other part is perhaps you're a little more evolved in terms of following 
values rather than leaders of your tribe. Well, and that's that, a but thing. there's also the instinct that I wonder about. And I was, uh, I remember a third or fourth grade report card on the old days. The left side was your let, were your letter grades, and on the right side were check marks that you were that you were good. Mm-hmm. And one of the things was works well with others. And I got a report card that was good on the left side. It was good on the right side, except works well with others. The teacher put a big, different color ink X through that. Wow. She wanted, <laughs> she wanted, she wanted my folks to see that I didn't work well with others, and I think I really never have. Okay. I, I'm, I'm a, I'll do it. Oh, I had a stint as the editor of the Arkansas Times, and we got some good issues out, but basically because I just re- rewrote everything, you know. Uh, I thought they were good issues because I wrote the whole thing. Uh, but I had no management uh, instincts at all. Uh, and, and Bromit, we need to have a meeting. Oh, God, what about? You know, just you, you write your article, you write your. That's, that's just the way I operate, but I, which I think is a factor in why my politics are so uh, group averse, tribe averse, I think. Well, we all have different, you know capacities and innate tendencies and luckily if if we do well we find a way to use our strengths and and you find a way to make a living not being able to work well with others well thanks for joining us on today's edition of on the other hand the first part of our conversation with john brummett be sure to check out the second part of this conversation with john as well as other podcast episodes of on the other hand You can find us on the podcast page of the Braver Angels website for Arkansas at arkansas.braverangels.org or on many popular podcast sites. When you visit our website, in addition to links to all our episodes, you'll find a link to email us at otherhandar at gmail.com. And you can use that email link to provide us with program feedback or suggested speakers. Again, that is otherhandar at gmail.com. On the other hand, is sponsored by Braver Angels in Arkansas. Music was composed by Randall Standridge of Jonesboro, Arkansas, and was performed by the University of Northern Colorado Symphonic Band, Dr. Richard Main, conductor. This particular interview was actually recorded at the Central Arkansas Library System's Roberts Library, and we really appreciate the use of their recording facility for this interview. From your host, Glenn White. And April Chatham Carpenter. Let's each do our part to bring our community closer together. 